I found a what is known as a folio point. It's been resharpened down. It was considerably wider here at the base, but over time, resharpening, it, it was made down to this uh, more of a teardrop shape. Okay, what identifies it as a folio point is its shape. It has some of a surfboard uh, willow leaf shape to it. What we have here is what we call a blade. It's actually it's a modified tool, pretty quick to make, and it shows, well, it was generally used like this. It has a sharp edge here and a flat edge here, so it could be used to cut or to scrape. And we know that because you can see tiny chips are broken here, and that's the kind of thing that happens when you scrape it along an edge. This is a tool that was quick to make, and was probably used a few times and thrown away. Right here we have a point that had been resharpened. We found this in Little Strap Unit 8, which is uh, mostly uh, it's probably a wind dust area, era, so a beach sand deposit. So putting around 8,500, 10,000 um, years ago. Here we have an example of a chert uniface. Uh, the material is cryptocrystalline silicate, chert for short. And um, you can see the unidirectional flakes coming off one side of the flake, none on this side, only on one side, so it's a, a uniface. And these unidirectional flakes would have been going across the whole edge, but through use wear and breaking, it's now only on this This is a good example of a blade. This was struck from a core in this fashion, it came off this way. It has evidence of other flakes being removed from it. This could be used as a tool as it is, or it could be further modified. Ready? So right here we have a long bone, a rock, a muscle shell, another rock right here. They're unfortunately they're in this in our eastern wall of Unit J. The, we're not going to excavate them. We're going to leave them where they are. So future excavations, they might have better knowledge, uh, better technology to, for an, analyzing. So what we have here is actually an intact part of the mandible. Uh, you can see by the teeth. Um, it's really actually pretty cool because um, with the teeth and preserved bone, if the bone collagen in the bone is actually preserved, then we'll be able to get a radiocarbon date, which will help us narrow down the age of this surface that we're on, that we believe to be around 10,000 years old. Damn, this is sweet, guys. So an interesting thing about this mandible here is that it's actually flanked by not one, not two, but three hearths, probably the same hearth. However, we haven't been able to figure that out yet. We'll see as we get down. But these oxidized sediments here are indicative of fire. And so the iron content actually increases and these sediments oxidize. And so that's how we are able to tell that they're cooking here. So this is probably someone's dinner around 10,000 years ago. Right here we have, we have a stone we, have, we excavated. You can see, you see on it, it has some, some remnants of charcoal right here, which we can potentially take back to, uh, to get radiocarbon dates for. Also, we have what looks like maybe impact marks on the edge. I think it's something that might be a hammer stone. Next, we're going to take a sediment samples from, from the sides and from underneath it to verify its provenience.